curious about what it's asking us. Okay, so first digit is saying find the leftmost digit that occurs in a given string. Okay, so something to notice right off the bat is, you know, there are some questions that'll ask us things like this and they'll say like, go through the string, find the first number if there is one and if there isn't one, return negative one. But this one is a little bit more, um, I'll say gentle, you know? So in this case, they are guaranteeing that the string is gonna have at least one digit. So that's, you know, that, that's kinda nice. We don't have to worry about the situation where there isn't one. And as it turns out, that's actually gonna be really nice in, in some of the ways we're gonna do this one. So just to get this started, let's look at this in the most naive possible way, the most uh, literal possible way. So let's just say let i be assigned the value zero. i is less than input string dot length, i plus plus. And now what we wanna do is we wanna say, um, well, we could do it two ways. You know, we could say let character be assigned the value of input string at i, and then do something like if, uh, well, well, we wanna see if the character's a number, right? So we could do something like this. If it's between zero and nine, right? Something like that. And then if it is, just return the character. And normally this is where we would do something like at the end, return negative one if you don't find if you don't find one. But as it turns out, we're not actually gonna have to worry about the negative one because it's not gonna happen anyway. Like we are going to have a, a digit. Well, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so we're finding the right digits in all of these cases. I'm noticing in each of the three examples given, because there aren't that many tests here, they don't have any that have more than one number. So let's let's make one with more than one number. And the, out should, the output should be one. And it's the string one because we're talking about like a substring of this whole thing. So output is the string one because that's the first one there. So let's go okay. And we'll run the tests on that. We'll see if that one works, if there are more than one. Uh, digit. So yeah, great. We're finding one. All right. So are there other ways we could do this? Well, here's, here's one way that I'm kind of interested in. Could we do something like this? Could we say type of character is number? Would that work just as well? As, as it turns out, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't work for this one that has multiple numbers. It wouldn't work for any of them. And the reason is basically exactly what I was saying over here. The expected output is the string containing the digit one. It's not just the number one, it's the string containing the digit one. So that's why we sort of have to keep it the way we had it before, something like this. Uh, or at least, you know, that's one way to do it. Now, before we go any further, I also wanna say, it's pretty clear that we're not using i in our loop at all here. We're not, we're not, you know, we're not using the index for anything. We're just using the character itself. So because of that, I'm going to rearrange our loop. I'm going to say let character of input string. And then we don't need this line. So not only does it make the contents of our for loop, like the specifications of our for loop nicer, it also means we don't have to keep as many lines inside the for loop itself. And really, I mean, we're looking at just one line here. So technically we could even like just bop this up here and have it technically be a one-line solution. Now, if someone told me they came up with a one-line solution and they showed me this, I'd say, eh, that's, uh, that's a debatable claim. I don't know about that. But anyway, uh, this is working. It's passing the tests, including uh, our custom one. So that's good, right? But first of all, I'm gonna put it back the way it was because it's a little easier to see that way. There's something about this that's still kind of rubbing me the wrong way, I guess. I mean, I like this enough that I'm gonna sort of keep it here for, uh, for memory's sake, you know, nice little souvenir. Uh, but for this one, I, I wanna actually change this because we're talking about strings here, which is why we weren't able to use type of number. Uh, but since we're talking about strings here, this is a great opportunity for us to use regular expressions. So we could say something like this. Uh, if this is zero to nine, you know, if this is going to be um, uh, a 
a, a digit, right? So this dot test character, right? So if our character is something between zero and nine, then we'll return that one. So let's see if that's gonna work. So zero to nine, test it. Yeah, that works. Okay, not bad. So we're using a regular expression here. Now, I was thinking about this problem and I was thinking, what if we don't want to loop through this whole thing? So both of these two methods we've used, I mean, they're nice. I like the fact that we're introducing regular expressions. I think that's appropriate for this kind of problem. But the thing is, uh, I don't want to use a loop here. I, I think we should probably be able to do this in such a way that doesn't use a loop. So maybe what we can do is try to find where the digit occurs. So we could say something like return input string dot index of, and then uh, find our digit. Oh, by the way, ah, geez, sorry about this. I actually forgot something down here. We don't need to write our regex like that. We don't need to say that it's zero to nine. We have a quicker way of saying that. We can just say it's a digit character. So backslash D should produce the same exact effect as, uh, as what we had with the zero to nine. So that's probably the better way of doing it if you are gonna use a regular expression in the loop. So, okay, glad we mentioned that. So, all right, let's go back to this. So we wanna say index of, mm, well, what? We wanna find an index of a digit. How do we do that? So, I mean, we could do something like this, I guess. Try searching for the regular expression, see if we can find where it's gonna have that index of a digit, you know? And we're finding negative one. It's saying, uh, I didn't find anything like that. I didn't find that regular expression, uh, any of the characters here. So we say, oh, okay, too bad. Maybe we'll try something like this and, uh, oh, I missed some of them, there we go. Uh, maybe this will work, right? Like maybe it's gonna match just one of the characters here and see where that uh, ends up. And no, that's not gonna work either. But I'm glad we tried it because it's sort of ruling out possibilities. So I was thinking about this, you know, I was thinking, well, what if we do wanna use something like index of, but with a regular expression instead of just a string? And it turns out, yeah, there's a thing for that. Now, I believe this is a new ECMAScript 6 thing, and I don't think that this is ready to be used in production, but we're gonna use it here just to sort of demo it to see how it works. And so we're gonna search the input string to find something that matches our regular expression here. Let's run that and we'll see if that's gonna work. So this is interesting, it's saying four. Why would it be saying four? Well, if we think about where the one is, it's at index zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's at index four. But we're not looking for the thing, like we're not looking for the four, we're not looking for the index, we're looking for the thing at index four. So input string at input string dot search for a digit. Okay, so there we go, that's passing that, it's passing that. I'd say this is probably pretty good, right? We've got this uh, search thing, but there's still something about that that's rubbing me the wrong way. I mean, I'm glad that we're not using a loop now. I think that's pretty cool. But I kind of think like we've got an input string here, we've got an input string here. The repetition is, is kind of, eh, it's bugging me. It's bugging me a little bit. So, and, and the main thing that's bugging me about this is we're using a search to see where the regular expression is gonna match. And then we're returning the match. But the thing is, regular expressions kind of work that way naturally. You know, we could do input string dot match and then just put the regular expression in there and it would just tell us what it matches. The thing is, we have to put a return, first of all. The other thing is, match is something that will return an array. Okay, so whether it's an array containing just one element or, well, technically all of them will be arrays containing one element. You might look at this one and say, well, shouldn't that contain like four elements? Like there are four digits there. The reason it didn't is because I didn't put the global flag at the end. So keep in mind, if you want it to match everything of this form, then put the G at the end, okay, after the forward slash. So that means global, it means it's gonna match every single one of them, so check it out. Now it's matching one, two, three, and four. And each of these is still just gonna have one of them inside. So it's not making a difference in terms of those. But really, we don't want an array, we want the thing in the array. So, uh, this reminds me of like, you know, 
spread operators, right? Where we want to break down the barriers of the array. The thing is, I'm pretty sure we can't just use a spread operator out in the wild like that, like not as an argument for something. So it's going to have a problem with that. Thing is, we just want the first element or the zeroth element of this array anyway. So we could just return the zeroth element. And now all of these are passing, this one's passing, everybody's very happy. I, to be honest, I would be a little bit happier if they made this problem such that you wanted to find the last digit in the string. Because I think that would make it more interesting because then we'd have to say, instead of just a zero here, we'd have to say something like, oh, okay, at uh, you know length of the matches minus one or something like that. Or uh, we could just say like, stop pop. Take it off the end, find the last one, pop it off. Now it's not gonna make a difference for each of the sample tests here because they only have one anyway, but for this one, yeah, now it's giving us the last digit. Okay, but that's not what it was asking for. So instead, if we wanna do something similar to that, we could do a shift, which is basically gonna take it off the left end of the array instead of the right end of the array. So is that gonna work? Yeah, that's gonna work. So what's better, using shift or using zero? Well, hmm. I mean, they seem pretty much equivalent for a question like this where we're not gonna be dealing with like a very huge array. I don't think it's gonna make a big difference, but I'm gonna use the at zero just because it's a little less destructive. It's not gonna be mutating. I'm, I'm not actually changing this array. And it's not like I'm using this array for anything anyway, but you know, just in case, like in case there was something we wanted to do with this, maybe we're like, maybe we're writing some code that someone else is going to be using and we wanted to sort of uh, go according to their expectations, right? So we don't want to be messing up the array after we find it. So let's just do something like this. And I think that should work. Uh, is it going to pass all the hidden tests? Let's find out. Yeah, it passes all the hidden tests. Okay, great. So uh, let's just make one more change here or not even necessarily a change. I just wanna show you another alternative. So this is totally fine, but another way we could do the same exact thing is notice match is a string method, okay? So a string can do a, a dot match. A regular expression, so like we had here, it also has a method called exec, which does something very similar. So let's, execute the regular expression. And we find the issue now is we're back to this, we're inside of an array. And, uh, oh yeah, again, because I didn't have the G on the end there, it's only finding one, but you know, that's fine. I'll just get the zero. In fact, I guess we don't really need the G on that one since we're just finding the, the first one. So that's again, you know, a reason why I think it might've been more interesting if they made us find the last one instead of the first one, but that's fine. So which one of these is better, the exec or the match? Well, let's see if they both pass all the hidden tests. Yeah, they do. Okay, so are they equally good? Well, it depends on the usage. Maybe if you're like a code golfing type, you might be looking at this and saying, mmm, this one up top saves a character. Tasty. Okay, so yeah, uh, you know, if that's what you're after, use the top one. I think, uh, I guess for me, I just feel a little more comfortable using match, mainly because putting a dot right after a forward slash feels a bit awkward, but you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. We could give a name to our regular expression if we wanted, you know, we could say like, let R E for regular expression be um, this thing. And then we'll say R E dot exec, all that. And you know, should work no differently than, than what we had before. Okay, so let's just restore that to its original beauty. And is that gonna, is that still working? Yeah, okay, great. So let's submit that. We've got quite a few variations here, but all of them are very, very short. So we've got a couple ones that use loops. We've got one that doesn't use a loop, but it's kind of inefficient about it, but it's kind of using this, this new uh, search method, which is pretty neat. Uh, you know, I like that we can use that for regular expressions, kind of like index of. Uh, and then we've got the ones that are pretty much our expected regular expression tools. Okay, so I guess we're done with that one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So as usual, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And 
we'll take a look at the next one. All right, so back to diving 